The judge said, I found that to be an unregistered securities offering. And you agree with me, right, SEC? And they go, yes. Then the judge said, but if Flipside sells it to someone else in the secondary market, independent of library, you got to agree that that's not, my order doesn't apply to that scenario. And that's the victory that we got. The SEC had to concede that on the record. In today's video, attorney John Deaton discussed the latest with the SEC Ripple XRP lawsuit. The recent summary judgments from Ripple and the SEC, and what's next for the procedural process. Before listening to him, please ensure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. A lot of people are confused. They're like, the SEC, the SEC won, the case is over. And, and that's not true. There were two amici filings in this case after the decision on summary judgment. One from Investors Choice Network. They also did one in the Ripple case. And the one that I filed on behalf of Naomi Brockwell. Okay, so everyone understands Naomi Brockwell, she runs a, a TV broadcast show. She owns LBC credits, LBCs. She has acquired them. She's never purchased them She's from anybody, and she's never sold them. When she first started acquiring them, it allows her to utilize the library blockchain and to produce videos and she stakes them and it allows for more views for her video. It's truly used as a utility token. When she first started acquiring them, she didn't even know they had a monetary value that you could trade them somewhere, you know, for two or four cents or whatever it was trading at the time. Absolutely 100% not an investment contract, not a security. That's clear. The SEC actually even agreed to that in so many words during the case that there were people like Naomi who were users of the platform, not investors. But the decision on summary judgment came down and the judge said library violated the law, but his decision what didn't address consumption, like users. His decision didn't specifically address secondary market sales, so it was left open and vague. And so we filed an amicus brief because the SEC was seeking an injunction. We're going to bring up the injunction because that was the main focus of why I was there today. It basically says, right, libraries, agents, servants, employees, attorneys, and all persons in active concert or participation who receives notice of this basic, basically injunction. That's all you need to know. It's all persons who are in common or participated. It doesn't say just library. It doesn't say just direct sales from library or its officers or, or executives, anybody. So that someone like Naomi Brockwell could be included in that, right? What's that mean? It's so vague and broad. And we all know how the SEC loves for it to be vague so that they have maximum prosecutorial options available to them. So that's why we got involved and said, listen, that's disastrous. And we went to the judge and basically arguing that we don't have a position on disgorgement. That's with library and the SEC on what fine library pays. But this injunction and secondary market sales are very, very important. And so the judge was there to talk about the injunction and a potential fine to issue against library for violating the, SC, the, the Securities Act and any disgorgement of any profits. And so what happened, basically, I got to speak about the injunction. Obviously, I'm not taking a position on disgorgement or a fine. And the injunction was where sort of the, the meat and the potatoes were for everybody in crypto and for XRP holders or anyone else. And the SEC wanted that injunction and they wanted basically to have that kind of vagueness out there. And, and I stood up with the judge when he gave me the opportunity. I said, listen, I respectfully disagree with you. That injunction is so overbroad that it does bring into secondary market sales into play for your honor. That's before you. And what I did is I reminded the judge of the November 21st, 2022 hearing. He, he actually interrupted the proceedings and wanted to speak to the judge directly, whether his attorney wanted to or not. 
And they say throughout that period, we begged them. We said, we'll do anything. We'll make any changes. We just want to be like Ethereum and Bitcoin and have this non-securities designation. We've offered years ago, we'll destroy the entire pre-mine. We'll fold the entire company. We'll give you every dollar in our bank account. We just want to achieve the same legal status as these other cryptocurrencies. And he, and he continues. And this is a CEO, an American entrepreneur. Whatever you think about Jeremy and politics, this is an American entrepreneur who was never charged with fraud, never charged with any wrongdoing like that. A strict securities violation. He said that after all these years, you'd think we would know what the rules are. There's so many people out there building and working in the field. You can read it for yourself on the screen as he's going there. They want to do this work. We want to at least know what the rules are. He goes on to talk about how libraries dead. They're going to, they're, they're dissolving. They, their employees have been laid off. They haven't been paid since December. The SEC threatened to bankrupt them during, before the lawsuit and because of the investigation after they paid millions and then millions during two years of litigation, they are bankrupt. And so that's basically what he was pleading. And the judge was very sympathetic. And, and when you all see the transcript, and I brought this to the judge's attention today, I said, judge, we can all pretend that secondary market sales are not being litigated. But on the transcript of that hearing, 13 times secondary market transactions were discussed on the record. And the judge piped up and said, smiled and said, yeah, I probably said most of that. And I said, you did. You said over half of it. In fact, the judge called it a problem. And I raised this to, I brought this to his attention, right? And uh, he said to the SEC that he's not, because he, the SEC said, look, secondary market sales are not in play here, judge. And this is him back in November. And he said, I'm not interested in participating in SEC policymaking, but I got a problem here. And he talks about how there's no fraud or anything like that. And there are legitimate uses that the token has and consumptive uses. And so I brought that to the judge's attention, right? Basically saying, look, let's not pretend. Secondary market sales are a problem. And, and I, I brought up to him that Lewis Cohen article, and uh, it's over 100 pages, and it researched all the case law since Howie for 76 years. And never once was there a case that said the underlying asset is a security, right? Beavers are beavers, but they were used in an unregistered securities offering. Bitcoin has been used in an unregistered securities offering. Chinchillas have been used. Condos have been used. Orange grows and oranges have been used. That does not mean the underlying asset is a security. So that's basically what we're saying and, and explaining to the judge that his decision, I, I said to him, look, that article says that your decision reads like it, you could be saying that LBC is a security in and of itself, the token itself. And judge, if you don't mean that, then we need to clarify something. So when the judge and I are going back and forth, the judge then explained to me that he's not inclined to give an injunction. And so that's out the window. There's a great victory there. There's not going to be an injunction that can be applied to users like, like uh, Naomi or anyone else. But then I said to him, judge, great. You're not going to give an injunction, but... You still please have to address this secondary market issue. And I pointed out to him that there's so much confusion about it. And then he did something great. He basically looks over at the SEC and says, you agree, right, with him that, you know, imagine that. I want everybody to imagine that a judge looking over at the SEC attorney saying, you agree with Deaton, right? They weren't that happy about it. But they then said, well, you know, what if it is a particular agent of the person and then it could be and the judge said you got to make a commitment and the judge did something great he said let's use an example and he said library sold to an investment club who took the lbc and put it in cold storage a direct sell the judge said i found that to be an unregistered securities offering and you agree with me right sec and they go yes then the judge said but 
if Flipside sells it to someone else in the secondary market, independent of library, you got to agree that that's not my order doesn't apply to that scenario. And that's the victory that we got. The SEC had to concede that on the record in real time. So call that what you want, but that was great. Um, the only downside for us, to be honest with you, and I should say this, the Ripple case came up because when he was talking about secondary transactions, he said, listen, uh, the SEC is not asking. They didn't file charges against secondary sale people and secondary sales. Um but one day the SEC is going to have to charge that or give clarity. And then he looked at the SEC attorneys and said, he goes, you're doing that in the Ripple case, right? And of course, they kind of shrugged their shoulders. They're not the SEC lawyers on Ripple. And of course, I'm biting my tongue because you can imagine how much I want to speak. But wasn't there about XRP. We weren't there to talk about Ripple. It was the, you know, we had to stay focused on what we wanted. So at the end of the hearing... Basically, he summed up and he basically said on a fine, he's inclined to only give a tier one fine, which is like $50,000. And he made a big deal about library did not engage in fraud. He said, quote, they didn't commit fraud. There's no misrepresentation. And they were doing everything out in the open and in the public. And that means something. He also then said, Although I rejected the fair notice defense, let's all be honest here. This case was brought as one of the first non-ICO cases uh, on a, dealing with crypto. And so the clarity is not as, as, as it is, as it was or should have been. He goes, not enough to survive, you know, to win on fair notice, but it's not lost on me. So it looks like a, a fine like that. And then disgorgement. There's going to be some kind of discovery of whether or not there is a net profit or not a net profit. It appears there isn't a net profit, then there would be no disgorgement. If there is, there could be a little. And the injunction, he said that he's not inclined to do that. Then he looked at me and said, Amicus, he goes, I'm going to make it clear that my order does not apply to secondary market sales. He goes... So that should satisfy you, right? And I stood up and I said, great. I go, if you would consider some language about how the token itself is not a security. And, and he smiled and said, well, I'm a minimalist. Uh, and so he left it open there. But when you think about it, if he's saying that secondary market sales aren't a play, then the token itself can't be a security. If the token itself is a security, then that means whenever it's sold, it would be a security. And so... We don't know. And here's the end result. The devil's in the details. When we see his decision, we'll know how successful this has been or not successful. Uh, it, there'll be a transcript. So everybody will get to read um, everything that I've been saying. There'll be more detail, obviously, in it. And they can. Uh, so we'll have that. But timing wise I, I can't tell you how long it'll take it depends on not if he's going to allow four or five weeks of some discovery on profits or no profits jeremy kaufman you know it's basically was saying listen library's done we can't afford this anymore and probably the you know both sad and humorous happened in the courtroom today and that was the SEC, they, they, they monitor Twitter. We all know that. If you follow me, you know that the SEC follows my tweets, right? They send the tweets to the judge. Look at Deaton. He's a mean tweeter. He said, we're an innovation-killing cesspool of corruption. Throw him off the case. Well, they said to the judge, we want to introduce this into evidence. And it was a tweet from library. And uh, the judge said, well, hand it to me. I'll read it. When the judge went to read it, he started laughing. And literally laughing out loud. And he said, uh, who from library wrote this? Jeremy Kaufman goes like this. The judge laughed further and said, I could have guessed that. And basically the tweet was that how library, when they first started, volunteered and cooperated with the SEC. And they thought that if they showed them their entire hand, that they would be the last to be prosecuted. Instead, they used all that information to prosecute them first. So Jeremy Kaufman's tweet was, 
I encourage everyone to hide and shield everything you can from the SEC. Don't volunteer to them. Basically, bury it. And that was the tweet. And the judge, you know, laughed and said, listen, I've been on the receiving end of Mr. Kaufman's comments. He goes, you can't take it personal. And then he went on to say, listen, people's jobs are at stake. He goes, blood, sweat, tears, and millions have been put into building this technology and they, they lost and they're angry and um, you can't take it personal. It, it's unfortunate situation. And so that's sort of where uh, it all ended. Um, what's it mean for crypto? I can tell you this, this hearing today, if you think we're getting regulations from Congress soon, then this hearing's irrelevant, right? Because Congress will give us our clarity. If we're not going to get any clarity from Congress, there's not going to be some legislation that says something that defines a security or not a security, if the CFTC has it or whoever. If we're not going to get that for a couple of years, then this hearing was extremely important. And every hearing in crypto will be important because that's the only clarity we will get. So if we get it in writing, like the judge said today, that this decision is only about when the library sold to a specific person on a specific day, the token's not a security and secondary market sales are not in play because there are people using this technology. That is a huge victory because if the way it was today before the hearing, it's vague. We could argue it either way. And the SEC is certainly going to argue. Imagine what Gensler is going to say. And now if we get the opposite, that takes that uh, uncertainty uh, out of the equation. And we know that secondary market sales are not in play from the, that kind of decision. So that's what it means. Uh, in the Ripple case, if the decision is something where the Ripple lawyers think that the judge should know, they'll bring it to her attention, even though she's in the review process. Remember, the library decision was cited 20 plus times in the SEC's reply brief to Ripple, right? Because it was a good ruling for the SEC. So if there's a good ruling that comes down that says secondary market sales, you know, are not in play and you can't do that, um, that's something that might be able to be used or, or cited to the judge.